Hi, I was poking around on YouTube tonight and I saw a couple of videos by, um, one was I think a radio call-in show and the other one was just a, a YouTube post uh, from uh, atheists uh, um, who didn't believe in speaking in tongues and uh, one of them just considered somebody who called in and said he could speak in tongues to a radio show uh, to be crazy and just, um, you know, I, I think a lot of atheists, a lot of unbelievers think that Christians are crazy anyway for believing in God. And they think that Christians who believe in miracles are even more crazy. And you wonder how anybody can believe this stuff, you know. And I, I know there's a lot of, there's probably a lot of charlatans. Um, you may see people on TV who are full of a lot of hype. And um, you see them pray for sick people in the wheelchair. And the sick people stay in the wheelchair uh, you know, when you're watching and, and all this stuff. And then you see somebody come up on stage and say, I've been healed of this, but you didn't see him before. You didn't see any evidence that they were sick to begin with. And you just write it all off as a bunch of, uh, you know, self, uh, you know, psychosomatic um, um, beliefs and all this kind of stuff. But I, I tell you, if you, if you, um, in my experience, I've seen a lot of stuff happen. I've seen a fair amount of supernatural things. And my experience is probably pretty limited as far as this goes. Just growing up in, in churches that believed in spiritual gifts, that believed in the supernatural, I've seen answered uh, prayers. I've seen, I'll explain some of my terms later, I've seen words of knowledge. Uh, I've seen God give people supernatural knowledge. I've witnessed that. I've been on the receiving end of that. I've actually been on the giving end of that a few times or several times as well. And um, you know, people will receive prophecies from God. Two people get the same prophecy or someone gives a message in tongues and two people get the same interpretation of tongues and one person gives it and the other one knows it. So um, I, I've known people who have who've been healed, um, you know, had serious medical problems and they get healed. And it's so, you know, there's some real supernatural experiences. I've seen amazing answers to prayer. Um, and, you know, as Christians, we see God working in our lives. And I would have to be an absolute idiot to not believe in God. I mean, it's just totally illogical based on my frame of reference with the experiences I've had. Now, I don't believe in God just because I've had these experiences. But after I believed in God and I had faith in God and I've been around other people who have faith in God, I've seen a lot of things. I've witnessed a lot of things. And it's not just a bunch of hype and it's not just a bunch of people you know, getting emotional and rolling on the floor or something and saying God did something. It's um, that God really works in people's lives. And I'll just give you some of my examples of things that I've experienced. Um, I've had people tell me what I was pray what I'd prayed for. I, w I was in my early 20s one time. I've had this happen more than once, but um, I was in my early 20s and I went to a Bible study at a church. And there's this lady there. We, it was during a before the meeting or during a break kind of thing or when we were getting started we had or maybe at the end we had potato chips and stuff and we were eating snacks and this lady that I'd met but I didn't really know that well you know I she went there and I sort of knew who she was but you know we never sat down and had a conversation or anything uh, she came up to me and she told me what I'd been praying about and I'd been I'd read you know in Acts 4 it talks about um, the um, um, let's see that when the apostles were persecuted, they prayed that the Lord would stretch forth his hands and do signs and wonders for the sake of his servant Jesus. So I was uh, praying and I prayed that passage, Lord, stretch forth your hand and do signs and wonders on the campus where I was where I was staying uh, for the sake of the serv your servant Jesus. I didn't pray that every day. I didn't. I don't know if I'd prayed that before, um, but I prayed it that day. And then I go to this Bible study that day. And this woman looks at me and she says, you've been praying for signs and wonders, haven't you? She got a word of knowledge um, that's a gift of the Spirit that comes from the Lord, and she, she spoke it out. And there's many, 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 many times that I've witnessed words of knowledge. And um, I got to, um, I, I was in a, a church where we, uh, like a church plant in a house where we prayed for people after the service was over. And I started getting words of knowledge while I was praying for people, and I'd pray specific things about them. And, uh, you know, in, in one occasion, I was at a church uh, retreat, and there was this Indian guy who was a student at the same school. We were both graduate students, but we didn't really know each other. I think I'd met him once and just said, hi, and my name is so-and-so. And, -so. Um, and I was uh, praying for people at the front who came forward for you know, people that came up to, they wanted to pray, and people pray with him. So I prayed with him, and I, or I prayed for him. And he wasn't saying anything, but I started praying about his ministry that he was doing, uh, the things that he was doing here in America. Then I prayed for the ministry that he was going to do in India. And I started praying for his needs. And I, I prayed that the Lord would give him a car, a reliable car. 
Um, and I remember, I, so I, I didn't know anything about him. I didn't know he needed a car. But afterwards, he went back to his wife and said, his, did my, you tell his wife that uh, they, my, our wives had been talking and I just arrived in late. They'd been there for days. If you told uh, him that we needed a car, their car was making noises. It was on its last legs, and uh, they, they 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 figured so they ended up getting another car. And he said the things that I was praying about was the same things he was praying about in his mind, and I I would pray about them out loud. I was just praying as I sensed the Lord was was leading me. And uh, you know, one time um, my I had a brother my brother liked to play hacky sack with his friend and pray with people. They, they would always have some kind of opportunity to pray with somebody about something, and uh, they would stay out really late in this college town where, near where we live, and they were out playing hacky sack, and it was 2 a.m. in the morning. We had stayed out really late, um, and uh, all the, the drunk people had cleared away from the streets, and my brother's friend said, oh man, it's late, let's go home. And I, and I didn't have peace about it. I didn't sense, I sensed the Lord didn't want us to go. So I said, let's not go yet. He said, no, no. I said, oh, let, let me pray here. Oh, Lord, if you want us to say, send us somebody with, I believe it was a green hat, red shirt, and blue shoes. I might've got the color of the hat and shirt mixed up, but around that corner. And my friend said, if we, we'll be here all night waiting for that. I said, Lord, in the next two minutes at my stopwatch, okay, about a minute and 44, 54 seconds or so later, this guy walks around the corner wearing the exact uh, description of what I what I described. And we, we had him go, he's just like a young 17-year-old guy. They'd actually met him before on the streets out there before. So they kind of, they played Aggie Sack with him once before. But they um, he took his shoes to the, under the white lights, the street lights were yellow of a, of a store there, so we could make sure they were blue. And we ended up praying with the guy, and you know, I, that's that's just some of the, the words of knowledge things. And um, I, I don't have, I've never oh, I've operated in interpretation of tongues. That's where somebody speaks a message out in a tongue, a foreign language, you know, that they, they get this message from the Spirit in a language they usually don't understand. But they speak it out in the church, and then somebody else interprets it. And I've known a couple of people that were good friends of mine that I trust that were being honest about this. And they say that somebody else would, they would get these words, the interpretation of the message in tongues. And before they spoke it out, somebody else gave it. And it was the same thing. And I've known people who get the same prophecies as other people. And I've also been in like a house church meeting where I, I since the Lord wants us uh, to do something or say something, and other people are getting the same thing. You know, so we're detecting the the same thing. Um, or I'll get, you know, I know I was praying for somebody in a in a state capitol uh, building where we just happened to uh, had had a prayer meeting uh, and we were ended up in the state capitol there about something. And I was uh, just, there's this a lady there, I didn't know her, didn't know who she was, didn't know what much about her, I just met her. But I started praying for her about uh, ministry with children, and my wife got something similar about her, about uh, ministry to children. And, um, you know, we discern, I discerned something about her, my wife got a prophetic word for her. Um, and, uh, you know, prophetic words, it, that's, I could go on and on about uh, experiences with that. But prophecies is not necessarily predicting the future. It's just whatever the Lord wants to say. A message from the Lord, um, that some sort of some word from the, the Holy Spirit moves someone to say. It's not necessarily about the future. It can be. But, um, you know, I, there's this one guy I knew that, uh, that I, I witnessed uh, give a number of prophecies, and he would get a lot of words and knowledge too. He got a lot of really specific stuff, including my parents, very specific stuff. My parents were looking for land to build a house, and he went on for like 30 minutes, uh, you know, talked about my dad's vocation, and talked about uh, some things that I uh, said the Lord wanted to do, and uh, prophesied about um, my parents getting uh, land to, and a house and all this kind of stuff, or uh, another plot of land that would have a water table on it, had, had a lot of water on it, had a spring, and anyway... Um, yeah, so there was a lot of detail. One, one time he was praying with this girl um, who was actually had refused to let him prophesy over the, her the night before, a couple of nights before. But he prayed over her and her sister. And then he started praying. He said, Lord, and I pray that you protect them. Um, and I pray for Toby. Then, and he prayed that Toby wouldn't uh, drive crazy. Toby was apparently one of their friends. They started cracking up because he had just gotten this really obscure detail. Who's named Toby nowadays anyway, you know, uh, about... Uh, Toby and, and hit the nail on the head and it, you know this stuff uh, it, it happens a lot of people grow up in churches that believe in spiritual gifts and they never experience or witness these things and you know I talked to them and they've never seen a word of knowledge that experienced a specific word of knowledge or or any of these kind of things that was obviously supernatural I, I guess I've been around I've been around different circles different groups of people I've seen quite a bit of this stuff and 
you know, so in, in my experience of all the things I've experienced in my life, God interacts in human affairs, and it's just, it's a reality, and, and there are people who get healed. God talks to people. This is just reality. If you haven't experienced it, that doesn't mean that it's not true. Other people do experience these things. Thanks.